Hey gang, it's Arjun again, and welcome to the bonus section on the RX Study Planner tutorial titled, What If I Fall Behind? Well, the first thing you should do is take a deep breath and depersonalize it, because the absolute wrong way to frame this is in terms of your own personal failings. Oh, I'm too stupid. Oh, I'm not efficient enough. Oh, I'm never going to become a doctor. None of that is going to help you out. Remember the common wartime aphorism that even the best battle plans only last until the troops' feet hit the ground. What that means is that your plans, which are entirely based on extrapolations and predictions and estimates, cannot possibly take into account the many, many real-world variables that you're going to come into contact with as soon as you start trying to actually execute your study plan. And that's why I consider course correction a necessary, integral portion of being a good study planner. Because you need to be able to, at all times, like a doctor, reassess your study plan, see if there's a problem, diagnose what the problem is, and proceed forward with an effective, well-reasoned management strategy. And as it turns out, the setup of the RX study planner allows you to actually do this pretty well. So the first step is assessment. How are you going to know if you're behind enough or not to warrant a course correction? Because all of these, the time predictions for these subjects are based on the assumption that the amount of time it takes is going to be proportional to the number of pages, that's just an estimate. That's not going to be 100% true all of the time, but it's a good starting point. So I generally say that, you know, if you've only done a few days of your study plan, it's not enough data points to say that you are behind or not. I generally give it between five to seven days before you come to that critical decision-making point. And if by five to seven days you have finished less than 75% of what you set out to do, I'd say that warrants a course correction. By two weeks, you should have definitely enough data points and have done enough different subjects to where you should be 100% caught up, plus or minus 5 to 10%. If not, that might warrant a course correction. So how do you go about doing this? Well, if today is Saturday, then you're going to mark the very next day off as the day of your hard restart. And basically, in your mind, I want you to consider this day all the way until step one as a brand new phase of your studying. You're wiping the slate clean, you're reassessing, and progressing forward from here. But first, you got to diagnose the problem. So, for the entire duration before the hard restart, what you're going to do is, what this says now is what you planned to study. What you're going to do instead is change this to account for what you actually did study. At a bare minimum, what this requires is that you go back and delete all the subjects that you didn't actually go through. But what's actually really beneficial in diagnosing the exact problem is to recreate this schedule based on what you actually got done on each day. And I've done that on a separate sheet here. So I've rearranged all of these subjects to represent what I actually got done on each day. And this is kind of where you'll see what your problem spots are. Now, the first thing I notice is that while pretty much all of these are in the red, meaning that I understudied for that day, there's a local minimum Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where I studied significantly less than I should have. Now, when you see something like this, it's of vital importance that you critically assess that time period and decide what happened differently that day. Was your long-distance girlfriend in town those few days? Were you having a nervous breakdown? Did your dog die? On this study schedule, it's actually fairly apparent what the difference is. These are all biochem metabolism days. So barring any major study condition or life event changes, I'm going to assume that it's the subject and not a specific study habit that got in the way. So if you go to subject list, you see that under biochem metabolism, I did assign it careful review because I knew that I was going to need to spend a little bit more time on that than the pages might account for. But perhaps being something that I needed to study in that kind of detail, maybe I should have assigned an intensive review instead. You'll see kind of the same thing. If you're one of those people who what you actually study fluctuates wildly between excessive understudying and overstudying and back and forth like that, that's also an indication that maybe you should go back and spend a little bit more time assessing each of these subjects and seeing whether they need careful, intensive, or normal review. Maybe you need to, to plan that out a little bit more accurately going forward anyway. So in addition to this local minimum, I can see that even the other days, I'm pretty consistently understudying by a 
about 75%. So what that tells me is that if I had started off strong and was gradually trickling down from there, that kind of smacks of mental fatigue or burnout. And there's a lot of techniques to address that. But if I'm consistently understudying, then this could mean one of two different problems. The first possible problem, which is what most medical students jump to, is you're not living up to the pace you set for yourself, that the pace is unrealistic. But I'm going to turn that around. Maybe what you are trying to accomplish within that pace is unrealistic. For example, are you one of those medical students who feels that during their material review, you have to not only read the chapter in first aid, every single fact, but also have to write out your own color-coded notes and watch two different videos and read the RX bricks? If so, you may be kind of overdoing it. You may need to, you know, re step back and set a realistic expectation for yourself. Maybe it's okay if I read a fact in first aid and I know it cold, maybe it's all right for me to just mentally confirm that, read the fact in first aid, and move on. Save that kind of intense, dedicated study time for the subjects that you're not as confident about. So what you're going to do now is you're going to keep track of the study pace that you'd originally set for yourself. I'm just going to type it down here, 3.3607, because you're going to want to reference this when we start changing stuff in the spreadsheet and the study pace starts to recalculate. Now what you're going to do is, because the hard restart marks a brand new phase of your study plan, you're going to readjust your full days and half days based on the amount of full days and half days you have from your hard restart all the way to step one. So that essentially amounts to seven fewer days than you had before, or 22 days, 22 full days and three half days. You're also going to want to readjust the number of questions that you're supposed to do if you chose to use this tool. Let's assume that I had originally decided to do two blocks of 42 questions a day, and I did actually finish them all seven days. So I did keep up with my questions. So you're gonna readjust the number of questions as well. And now once you've done that, you're gonna take all of these subjects, the ones that came before the hard restart, go to your subject list and skip them. That was in the past. That's not a part of your current brand new study plan. You're just going to skip, skip, skip. As you can see, the predicted time required drops down to zero. Furthermore, in your total page count right here, as you keep skipping subjects, that total page count is going to decrease, allowing you to recalibrate your pace. See, it's dropped down to 528. So you're going to go back to your monthly calendar, and now you see that. From the time of your hard restart to step one, in order to finish all of that content, you're going to now have to study at a rate of 3.74 pages per hour. And it's higher than your previous pace, and that shouldn't surprise you because your previous pace was based on the assumption that you were going to study significantly more than you did that first week. That's okay. Like I said, part of this is going to be managing your expectations as to what you're actually going to do for your material review. But if you decide after that that you really, really do need more time, in addition to simply doing less stuff during your material review, then probably the best place to find extra time is going to be in your daily schedule, because that's going to be multiplied by all of these days. So you go to your daily schedule, and you see where can I possibly nip out some time to add to material review. Self-care? Sure, I'm spending about an hour on the treadmill. Maybe I can spend 30 minutes on the treadmill, and that will be adequate. I'm all right with that. The question bank. So I mentioned before that I'm pretty neurotic about going over questions. I like to go over every single answer choice and really dissect why I missed the problem. Maybe I can afford to be a little less neurotic and change that to one hour worth of going over questions for every two hours of question bank. Finally, this flex time thing can absolutely go because I need more time to allocate to material review. Make sure you put a zero in here, otherwise the formula freaks out. And you'll see that I now have two additional hours that I can reallocate to material review. So now I have eight hours. And when you go back to your study plan, you see now that the pace required of you is going to drop substantially. And that's kind of cool, right? But always remember that in addition to adding more time, a very key part of this is being more realistic. Because remember, the pace of 3.36 hours didn't end up working out for you. 
You're going to have to drop the pace a bit, but this might not be enough of a drop. You were 75% behind, and this is not a 75% drop in the pace that you've set for yourself. So you're also going to have to adjust your expectations accordingly. If you still don't have enough time, you can try to reallocate some of these days that you're not spending on material review to actual, you know, full study days. Maybe you don't have to do four, five practice tests. Maybe you can afford to take one of those days off for full study. I would be a little bit hesitant before reassigning days off to material review. Maybe you can take a half day off instead of a full day off. But burnout is a very real thing. And giving yourself enough break time is essential to you being maximally productive for the entire study period. But let's say that I do take those days off and turn them into half days off. Then I'll have an additional two half days. And that's going to decrease my required pace even further. And I'm starting to feel a little bit better about this. See, not so bad. As a last resort, there is always the option of pushing out your test date. And some people will argue vehemently against this. I do not take that firm of a stance. I think that the reason that people argue against this is because a lot of times the decision to move the test date out is not rational or logical, but more fear-based. And the second reason is because a lot of people do burn out by the end of their study period and simply try to beat their brains against their textbooks for two more weeks is just going to make them more stressed out and more sad and it will probably do worse. The whole purpose of this study planner and the whole purpose of this video, by the way, is to make sure you approach planning in a deliberate, thoughtful manner that is sustainable over a fairly long period of time. If you accomplish those things, and at the end of the day, you still truly in your heart of hearts believe that even doing only what is productive for material review, even after reallocating more time to material review on your study days, even after reassigning some of these days to become full study days, if even after all of that, that pace is completely unreasonable to you, then I think it is completely acceptable to move your test date out. But I think it should be kind of your last resort and that you should try all these other strategies first. And that about covers it for what to do if you fall behind. Hopefully this allows you to use the RX study planner to plan for this eventuality in a thoughtful, deliberate manner rather than with panicking and flailing of arms. That about covers it, but I, I got one final word of advice for you. A lot of being able to stick with a plan like this is about avoiding burnout. But remember that burnout is only partly caused by stress and mental fatigue. Part of burnout is about your mindset. So I'm going to encourage you all to think of this dedicated period not as a horrible slog or another unpleasant box to check on your way to your plastic surgery residency, but as an actual opportunity to learn. I mean, think about it. You're never going to have another time like this where your literal only job is to sit your butt down in a chair and get smarter. I mean, during your clinical years, residency, even as attending, you're still going to have to read and study, but you're going to have to try to cram that in in bits and pieces when you're already exhausted from work. Yes, I know, the dedicated period is tough and stressful, but it's also the best opportunity you're ever going to have to build that foundation of raw medical knowledge upon which you can develop your clinical skill. This is going to be like your boot camp, but you're going to be a smarter, better doctor for the work you put in in the coming weeks. Anyway... Thanks for watching, and please give us some feedback as you use the plan to make this better for the next generation of students to come. Work hard, stay sane, and don't burn out. Happy studying, friends.